The next is salary advance. Salary advance is not a deposit. I don't have to dwell on that part. Dwell on this much. Any non-interest bearing amount received or held interest. Friends, don't break and read this sentence. This is a complete sentence in itself. Don't read that any non-interest bearing amount is not a deposit. It's not like that. Because the word or is used, or held in trust, don't break the sentence and read it. This or is only for received or held. It is not for the entire sentence. I hope I am able to tell you something. I am able to tell you what I am trying to read, how I am trying to read this. Read it as a complete sentence. Any, any non-interest varied amount received or held in trust. So if you have any amount which has been given to you in trust, in trust study, in bailment, then such an amount is not a deposit. Right? A seizure, a raid or maybe something takes place. Or say, you have to urgently leave out of the city and then you are placing that amount with that person. That company is saying you keep it for two days and I will come back and get it back from you. It's a contract of bailment where the person has, has to return the goods back to you. That amount is held in trust by him. In trust means not a trust as under the Indian Trust Act. So any such amount if it is lying, that amount will not be treated as deposit. Some of us are trying to interpret this to mean that every non-interest varied amount is not a deposit. This is not the case. Don't try and read that every non-interest varied amount is not a deposit. It's not the case. Only if such money is held in trust by somebody, only in such a case it is not a deposit, otherwise it is surely a deposit. Right? Any amount received in the course of or for the purposes of business of the company and then there are four conditions as advance for supply of goods or services to be appropriated against the same within 365 days from acceptance. Any business advance which has not been appropriated within a period of 365 days, it will be treated as deposit. Friends, I must tell you that this culture of advance is really causing a major embarrassment and a major source of concern in almost every balance sheet that you may see. Anything that you don't want to explain is shown as an advance. Advance by its very nature is an obligation which has to be met either by supply of materials or by supply of services. If an advance is not backed by any such obligation, it is not in the nature of an advance but it is actually a loan, it is actually a financial accommodation that has been provided. This will become relevant even for the purposes of section 185 and 186 and this is also relevant for the purposes of deposits. Here a very simple mathematical calculation. You receive an advance, you keep it beyond a period of 365 days without appropriating it. I don't have to see how and why and for what purpose you received the advance. So long as it is without 365, it is more than 365 days, it will be treated as Sir, they then they wapas le lete. Do din baad me le lete. The more we try to maneuver and the more we try to manipulate, I don't have to tell you how agile the lawmakers have become now. And and any, I am sure they will be able to call this bluff. And and even those amounts which have been refunded to the same party and taken back from the same party, they will surely be treated as deposits in time to run. Yes, please. What about subscription received for three years? Say a magazine is being published. Subscription received for? Three years in advance. For three years like we are paying. And a company has received subscription for three years. 
advance subscription you are saying, advance income basically, which you have received, for example, you are paying for any Outlook magazine or anything, it is sales advance basically, it is sales advance that you have received. No, that will be adjusted against the services. No, but services has, but it is the the first year service has not been appropriated. It's not been appropriated. No, the moment you finish, <laughs> 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 absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I agree with what you are saying. See, what he is saying. These subscriptions are, you give a special weight for subscription for one year, right. subscription for two years, subscription for three years, right? The moment you receive the advance, the first copy starts going on from the next month, so the appropriation starts. The appropriation is not completed within 365, but the appropriation process starts. So that will not be treated as deposits. If you have not appropriated at all, then surely it will be treated as deposits. Sir, what about with the uh, housing complexes? Next exemption for the internet hospital. Most of the approach is all pushed by Yes, sir. Sir, in case of mainly power company, the gestation period of supply is sometimes more than two years, three years. What will they happen? See, trade advance, where the large term or power projects are there, if you just allow me to read all the four clauses, yes, perhaps these, these questions may not arise. If there are, let's say, <coughs> you are doing business with some customer and he has given you one lakh rupees. And you supply him uh, goods of 95,000. So 5,000 or 15,000 you have received extra. But that customer, you know, he is not doing business with you anymore and he is maybe forgotten about it. So do you go and pay, call him and tell him that you take your money lying with us for five years? Oh, we are not so nice people. <laughs> Don't tell me that. So what? You <laughs> can surely put it as your income. Why do you bother about it? So you should book it as your income or show it as advance? If he asks you back, pay him back and book it as your expense at that point. Because <laughs> you are not sure if he will come back after 5 years or 10 years. I understand that. So, no, see, if it is the money received from a company, then you can certainly take a plea that it is the money received from a company, so it will not, it will fall under clause steps and I am not bothered about this clause. That is one exception. If it is not a company, but say if it is a partnership firm or some other entity, in that case, I would advise you to put it as your If the amount is not very significant. They are very insignificant. I know that. Less than 50,000. Nobody will leave a significant amount. Yeah. So it's not 50,000, 20,000 small amounts, which sometimes we have to Over write off as bed tax. Yes. If it is for, from a customer, we write it off as bed tax. But sometimes where you have to take an advance because you are not sure about the customer, that time you have the opposite of a pattern, which is Absolutely. a positive. Absolutely. So it will be a receipt in your hand which will be taxable as well. So in the next fellowship we should just Absolutely. clean it. Absolutely. Amount received as advance received in connection with consideration for property. Sir, somebody asked me about property. Provided that such advance is adjusted against the property in terms of their All those builders where you put a flat, where money is being paid and the flat is delivered to you say after 3 years, 4 years, all those advances which have been received, if they are appropriated and ultimately against the property, then it is not a deposit. But if you take money for property and never deliver a property and always cancel the agreement and return the money back, then it will shortly be a deposit. I hope you are able to understand what I am saying. The moment I tell you that money received against sale of property is not a deposit, then we may be very, very enthusiastic in showing every trade advance as an advance received for sale of property whether or not we have a property. And then we cancel the agreement saying that no this did not materialize and refund the amount. That will, I mean I am sure everybody will be a, a, a simple investigation and the block will be called off. Those monies will surely be treated as deposits. Right? Security deposit for the performance of any content. Any security deposit is not a deposit. Right? 
any advance received under long term projects or for supply of capital they are not deposits clear so i hope both your queries are answered if you have anything else to know right Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Any amount brought in by promoters by way of unsecured loan in pursuance of stipulation of any lending financial institution or a bank subject to the loan is brought in pursuance of the stipulation imposed by the lending <coughs> institution. Very very important. When your accounts are restructured, when new loans have been sanctioned to you, the banks insist on a condition that promoter's contribution has to be so much of amount. When promoters may bring in that contribution either by way of equity or by way of loans, promoters may not all the promoters may not be shareholders and may not be directors in the company. They may be even shareholders. when the shareholders as promoters bring in money and and that money is being brought in to fulfill the condition which has been stipulated by the bank with respect to promoter's contribution that will not be treated as deposit a very very important exemption most of the times promoters will margin banks will fund you to the extent of say 75% 80% the balance money has to be brought in by promoters they may bring in either in the form of equity or they may bring in in the form of loans if they are bringing it from their companies no problem i have the benefit even of clause 6 but if individuals put in money and if those individuals are not directors in a company or if they are not relatives of a director if the borrowing company happens to be a private company then in such cases you can take benefit of clause number 13 right friends the last explanation is very important any amount received whether in the form of installment or otherwise from a person with promise or offer to give returns in cash or in kind on completion of the period specified in the promise or offer or earlier accounted for in any manner whatsoever shall be treated as deposit Is this clear? I'll read it again. Any amount received, whether in the form of installment or otherwise, from a person. Now, just imagine, just imagine Anjali Jewelers, just imagine any jewelry uh, shop, even Talis, for that matter. Amount received, up to zero minus by installment digit, from a person, from me, with the promise, I promise to offer you a return of. Hold worth 12 months of installment. You pay me for 11 months. I will give you hold worth 12 months. So I am giving you returns. But returns is not necessarily in cash. It is. It may be in the in time even. On completion of the period, the period is 12 months. Such such amount will be treated as deposits. So all these. particularly these gold streams which were prevalent which stated that you put in money for 11 months in installments and i will give you gold worth 12 months they all will now be treated as deposits if you you would have seen anjali jewelers and others have already stopped these things tanish has already come out with a disclaimer in its website clearly stated that all those monies which were at which we were accepted under the earlier contract we will continue to accept them but no fresh monies will be accepted so this was told it is fine but this was really really rampant in face of all those ponzi companies where they said yes pay money for 11 months 12, 12 months and pay goods worth 13 months of installment free from us all those ponzi companies i don't have to name them there are too many of them in west bengal so all those ponzi companies these monies will now be treated as deposits and they cannot be accepted right friend this is all about definition of deposits to sum up in case of a private company 
money received from any loanment, money received from a bank, money received from any other company, money received from a director, money received from a relative of a director, money received by way of secured debentures or compulsory convertible debentures, money received as share application money and allotted within a period of 60 days or refunded within a period of 75 days, money received as a business advance for these four purposes, all these monies will not be treated as deposits. Any money received other than this will be treated as deposits. Yes, please. So money from relative or director is not subject to any net worth, uh, upper limit or anything? To any amount? Under the new law. Under the new law. After 15th of September. But members still, if they are not relatives, they cannot. Uh, I don't say they cannot. They will be treated as deposits. They will be treated as deposits. They will be treated as deposits. They will be treated as in case of public company, the only difference is you cannot accept money from relatives of your directors. It's only in case of private companies that you can accept money even from relatives of directors. I okay. think in their uh, earlier exemption, they had you mentioned that up to paid up at free reserves, up to that extent, from relatives of directors. I repeat, in case of private companies, Monies can be received from relatives of directors. In case of public companies, monies cannot be received from relatives of directors. Monies can be received only from directors of directors. Subject to the declaration that the money that they are put in is out of their own funds and not out of their funds. Clear? This paid up capital and free reserves and now that share premium has also been included in it, this is with respect to monies received from shareholders. The limit, 25% or 35%, whatever is in the limit, it is in respect of that that they have word included the word share premium. And Sunday creditors, do they have to be paid back in within 365 days, otherwise? They will be treated as a Sundry creditors basically it's for supply of materials. There is yes. no advance receipt no advance. and they are your creditors. Yes. But you have you to pay them for two you years. You have to pay them. Yes. That will not be treated as so You can pay them in three years also. That would depend on the terms of contract that you have with the Sundry creditors. Yes. If they yes, then yes. I'm sure you won't mind myself and join me along with ah, myself. Yes, no so now having understood what are deposits and what are not deposits, I'm sure 90% of your problem is over. Because 95% you accept only these monies. These are the monies which you generally accept. Either you receive money from bodies from bread from companies or you receive money from directors of the company. 90% of the companies are private limited companies, so even from relatives is now enough. If you have to receive money from shareholders also, now the situation is such that you need to receive money from shareholders also, then what is the provision? Or if you need to receive money from public in general, then what are the provisions? We need to understand that. Private limited companies cannot accept money from public at all. Let us be very clear on this. Money deposits from public can be accepted only by public companies led to certain eligible public companies which, which have specified network. Private companies, no acceptance from public. But private companies can accept money from their shareholders. Let us see what are the conditions that they need to fulfill for accepting money from shareholders. But these conditions apply only if the shareholder is not a relative. If he is a relative, then he will be exempt. He will not. I, I will again say, you first decide whether the money received is a deposit or not a deposit. 
money is received from whom? Relative who is also a shareholder. For where? If he is also a shareholder, for where? Is a relative or not a relative? So is it a deposit or not a deposit? If it is not a deposit, then it is not. Right? Only when you don't fall under any of these exemptions and you still want to receive money from a shareholder who is not qualified for exemption under any of these clauses, then what is the requirement that you need to fulfill? I am trying to take that. Clear? Right. But could you have to provide for the interest? Ramana Sara. Yes, sir. Interest? So the, do you have to pay like market rate interest to the relative? You can, it will not be treated as deposit, but are, can you pay 6% or 2% interest on loan taken from relative? Can interest free loans be taken from relatives? Let us yeah. put it this way. Right? Yeah. Why do we limit ourselves to some percentages? Can interest free loans be taken from other companies? Can interest free loans be taken from directors? In case of a private company. Right, sir? Yes. Let us tackle each one of them. Basically, there are only two problems. Can interest free loans be taken from other company? Can interest free loan be taken from directors and relatives? Directors and relatives, because both of them are individuals, I am clubbing them together. Clear? There is no doubt. Because it is not a deposit at all and there is no provision in the Companies Act which regulates taking of money at a particular interest. It regulates stripping of money at a particular interest but it does not regulate taking of money at any particular interest. I hope I am clear in what I am saying. If a company wants to lend money, then it has to lend money at certain interest. Those provisions are there in the Companies Act. But if a company wants to borrow money, then it has to borrow at a specific rate of interest. Those provisions are not there in the company. So there is no doubt in my mind that directors and relatives can surely give interest-free loans to their companies. You may have an income tax problem with respect to their files which you may have to counter and which you may have to satisfy. That's a different issue. But as far as companies are concerned, Companies can take interest free loans from directors and their relatives. Clear? Can companies take interest free loans from other companies? You can take, but those companies can't give. I am saying it may be any group company, sir. Both husband and wife directors, their shareholders, there. You can take, as far as your pension is concerned, you can, but they can't give you. Because they are bound by the provisions of 185 and 186, they will have to satisfy those provisions. If you satisfy those provisions, <laughs> or if you come out of those provisions, then yes, even they can. <coughs> I hope I am able to tell you that you will have to give money at a specific rate of interest is provided either in 185 or in 186. If you can negotiate 185 and 186 and come out clean out of these sections, then yes, you can. Right? I'll give you a small example. Suppose the lending company is a company whose principal business is of finance or whose principal business is of infrastructure facilities. And it is not a related party. 185 doesn't come into play if it is not a related party, right? Only 186 comes into play. The exemption section of 186 says nothing contained in section 186 shall apply to any such company which is engaged in the business of providing infrastructure and facilities. So if nothing in this section applies, then even the question of interest rate does not apply. So such companies can provide interest rate loans. Provided they are able to satisfy their shareholders, provided they are able to satisfy their board of directors that whatever they are doing is right and, and, and is in the interest of their company. If governance is not an issue, then surely they can. Right? Generally, a company cannot give interest free loans to other company, 
Relatives and directors then provide interest-free loans to their companies. Income tax is a separate issue. I am not going into that today. Clear? <coughs> yes, please. And these loans from relatives do not fall under related party transaction. Mr. Satya Kumar will take the class of related party transactions. I will, I will, since you have raised this question, I will surely answer this. Under the Companies Act, only specified contracts, contracts which are listed, only they are governed by the provisions of Section 188. Those contracts are contracts for sale, purchase, or supply of any goods and materials. Contracts for sale, purchase of any movable property. Contract for leasing or renting out of any movable property. Contract for rendering of any types of services. Contract for any agency, whether it's a sales agency, purchase agency, or whether it is any broken agency in relation to a property. Contract in relation to any office or place of profit. Contract which is in relation to underwriting of any subscription of any securities. It is only these contracts which are covered by section 188. A finance arrangement is not covered by section 188. So if it is not covered by section 188, then it is not a related party transaction which I need to be covered. Accounting standard 18 is different. You may still be covered by AS 18, but, but AS 18 is only a disclosure requirement. It is not a compliance requirement. 188 is a compliance. So no board meeting resolutions are required for taking a loan from... Don't, don't go out of this hall by saying that if you are taking money from a director, no board meeting resolution is required. I have only answered this question, that if a money, if a loan is taken from a director, 188 need not be applied. If resolution pass then I will have to open section 179, I will have to open section 178 and take you through those sections, that whether you fall under those sections or don't fall. Right? The companies have served the best part of company. First is, time has now come to start fearing companies in 2013. Till now, companies have only been fearing income tax act or maybe service tax act or maybe other apps. Time has now come to start fearing even the companies act. The cost of non-compliance in companies act is now going to be the highest. Once the penalties provision start getting implemented, I am sure our, we will have sleepless nights. Even today, if there, are, if there is a form which is not filed beyond a period of 300 days, I am sure there is no way you can file the form. You will have to apply for condonation of delay. In condonation of delay, you have to pay compulsory penalty. Only thereafter forms will be prescribed. You can only thereafter file the forms. And penalties range from 5,000 rupees per director to 2 lakhs rupees per director in several sections. So I hope you can understand. And this is entirely at the discretion of the person who is adjudicating the penalty. So, we have to be very, very careful. Companies Act has to be read in totality. One section you may not be hit, but there, is, there may be some other section which might be hit. So, be sure of all those provisions before you take a decision in respect of another. Right? So, now having understood what are deposits and what are not deposits, Having understood that 95% of our problem is solved because we don't accept deposits, we generally fall under accepted deposits. But still there may be 5% of companies which may still be wanting to accept deposits from shareholders. <coughs> what are the provisions? General rule is no company can accept deposits. No company shall invite, accept or renew deposits from public except in the manner provided. Only if you are accepting deposits in terms of section 73, <coughs> subsection 2 or in terms of section 75, only then you can accept deposits, otherwise no company can accept deposits. Right? Section 73 subsection 2 says that deposits can be accepted from members of a company provided you satisfy these conditions. What are these conditions? 
you have to pass a special resolution, you have to issue a circular including a statement showing these particulars. This circular and the statement is required to be filed with the registrar of companies in a specified form within a specified time limit. You will have to create a deposit repayment reserve account which is equivalent to 10% of your 15% of your deposits matured in this year and in the succeeding year. You will have to provide deposit insurance. You will have to obtain no default certificate from your borrower, from your lenders. And you will have to provide security and create a charge if your debentures are secured. If your debentures are not secured, then this is not. If your deposits are not secured, then this is not required to be. So these are the conditions which have to be satisfied.